Go ahead, say something. Good afternoon, Dick and Kevin. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Uh, well, we're happy to be here today. We are um, starting something new in uh, St. Clair of Assisi Parish. We're trying to keep our community together in times of uh, physical distancing. So we social have invited distancing. social distancing, yeah. social distance. We invited you today to our uh, Zoom channel at St. Clair to um, listen to that voice of wisdom and spiritual <laughs> support that we get from okay, you. Yeah. So. The St. Clair Fantasy Channel. Go ahead. <laughs> so um, we're here today. Today is April um, 4th. We are getting ready for Palm Sunday. Oh, yes, that's right. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Pay no attention. And uh, go ahead, and uh, while I'm getting myself yeah, muted. Well, okay. And Boy, there'd I'll be people you... who would pay good money to have you muted. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> it's funny how we find things out about ourselves and um, our faith during times of interruption. So the other day, I happened to stumble across this uh, application that I'm going to talk about in a second. But um, first, I wanted to talk about uh, our creed, because during our creed, we recite or reference the four characteristics of our faith, that it is one holy Catholic and apostolic. I wanted to talk about the Catholic aspect today. Catholic, as it's used in the creed, really means universal around the world. So even though we are separated by distance, as Catholics, we are united by our faith and our baptism. So that brings me to an application that I found recently, and some of you may know about it, but to me it's relatively new. And it is called, it's called mass-online.org. I hope you can see that. It's available for both Apple and Android applications. And what this does is it offers you a schedule of masses that begin as early as one o'clock in the morning and on weekdays go to about four or five in the afternoon. And on weekends, they go later into the day, perhaps as late as eight o'clock at night. And the great thing about this application is that one o'clock in the morning, for example, you can join Pope Francis live in Rome and watch him offer a mass. Or you could go to places like Malaysia and hear a mass from that country in that language. Or you can go to Australia, Scotland, Ireland, England, France, and many places in the continental United States. And I have found in attending mass around the world, so to speak, that we are truly Catholic because no matter where I go, the mass is always the same. Wherever I join it, whether it's from the beginning or in progress, I know exactly where we are in the Mass and what is going on during the Mass. And that gives me a great connection, not only to God by viewing the Word and the sacrifice of the Mass, but also by knowing that my faith encompasses the world in a very stark contrast to the virus that's encompassing our world right now. So that is why I believe this application can put you not only in touch with mass around the world, but remind you, remind me that we are truly Catholic. We are universal in our belief and in our connection. So uh, that's it. That's what I've been doing. And thank you for uh, allowing me to share that with you today. Well, Dick and Kevin, thank you so much. Um, as we all are learning to interact with the technology, uh, we wanted to show our parishioners that we are 
here for them, right? Whether we are still a community, even though they were physically are not in under one roof or in the same building at the time, uh, we wanted to remind them that the church is us, that we are right. still the church wherever we go. And yes. today we wanted to do this little uh, interview with you um, to show our um, parishioners that we all are in the same place. So let's see how many days you, um, your family have been, you know, in quarantine and just tell us a little bit about what is your daily life. Well, I'm fortunately retired. So as a friend of mine once said, retirement means six Saturdays and a Sunday. So my routine is pretty much the same, but what I have found is that doing morning and evening prayer, which, uh, because I'm ordained, I have to do that canonically. I'm required to do it, but I love doing it. But it means more to me now. And, uh, you know, absence makes the heart grow fonder. So I do miss seeing people in the parish and meeting them at Mass. And I really miss the physical experience of attending Mass. Uh, as perfect or as imperfect as the experience may be for me from week to week, it is still something that is so important. And I hope that this is an opportunity for everyone, not just me, to reevaluate the importance of the church and the sacraments and the beauty of community and uh, the importance of the Eucharist and, and the whole that, that leaves in our lives, not having that connection, that physical bodily connection that we have with Christ through the Eucharist. I have it when I think about Jesus or my faith or my loved ones or I pray, but it is, it is not the same as being with my faith family and having him in my presence, in my hand, and ultimately into my body. And that is something I really miss. Other than that, I do a lot of reading. Uh, I've been watched a couple of Netflix things. And, um, but I'm looking back to getting, I'm looking forward to getting back into normalcy. So that's it. Thank you for sharing that um, with us. And um, how you think that we should tell our parishioners to cope right now that we are not able to, as you mentioned, receive the body of Christ. Um, and although we are participating um, with mass online, uh, we still craving, you know, that action of receiving communion every Sunday. So what is your advice for people that it's really, really struggling with this um, throughout the quarantine that we all, you know, have to be in our homes? Um, that kind of brings you back to this massonline.org <clears throat> application. When I look at the churches around the world and uh, listen to the readings and listen to the homilies, they are never the same. And as I look at the priest, who is the solitary recipient of the Eucharist during these masses, or at least the ones I've watched, um, I recognize through its absence, its beauty. And I recognize through hearing the word, its meaning. So the way to cope is not to, I think, long about or become anxious or melancholy about what it is that we don't have, but seeing the glory of God and his love in the things that we do have that can bring him to us in a special way. As an aside, other things I do is uh, read the Bible. I'm reading Acts right now. It reads like a novel. So do the books of Kings, the books of Judges. I mean, they're great books to read. And for example, 
I realized that many people, myself included, always thought that Moses was not allowed to enter into the promised land because he struck the rock twice. But when you read the Bible, actually God tells him to say certain words and the water from this rock would, would flow forth. But instead, Moses struck the rock two times. And he wasn't supposed to strike it. He was only supposed to speak. And that shows you two things, uh, how easy it is for us to misunderstand or not really know what the Bible says. And the second thing is, is the power of the word of God. When we have him, when we are following his will, all we really need to do is follow what he says, because so powerful are his words and his thoughts that just by merely thinking and saying what he tells us to think and to say, we can achieve his will and bring his light into the world. So that's, that was pretty kind of interesting, I think, or not. If you like that kind of stuff, it's great. Doesn't, if it doesn't appeal to you, then, you know, I'm wasting your time talking about it. So. Well, as always, Zig and Kevin, you bring us uh, much of the reflection and insights of, you know, learning about the Word of God. And we are blessed to have you in our parish. Yeah. Uh, we are doing this interview very informal. And we started with an idea at the beginning, but I think um, our parishioners will definitely appreciate everything that you have shared with us today. And I think just for this reason, uh, using our technology to bring uh, your wisdom to our parishioners is just a blessing for all of us. So thank you for being with us today. And this is St. Clair of Assisi Parish. We're trying something new, trying to use technology to get to everybody's home and we will be live streaming the mass um this we're getting closer to um holy week uh today we are live streaming our palm sunday mass uh, to be able to share with our parishioners so follow us on facebook youtube our uh, website stclairenj.org and we be happy to have you um in any of this uh live streaming but if you miss it you can always go back and find it on youtube and facebook and our website stclairnj.org so you can kevin you want to say goodbye to all of the partners? i will do that but there's one other thing i wanted to mention and it's really kind of important <clears throat> during this time of uh, upheaval the um fact is is that the the financial flow of funds into the church has virtually stopped so i would ask you from my heart to your heart to uh, continue sending us your contributions because uh, expenses continue we have to meet staff salaries which are very important to us and by extension to you so uh, please um, I realize your money is probably tight for everybody, but I would just ask you to follow your heart and send us whatever it is that you can with this assurance that no matter what you send, God will find a way to replace and restore to you what it is you're doing for his bodily uh, presence on earth. Uh, thank you. Um, perhaps happy Easter. Uh, if you are ill, please get better. Know you are in my prayers. And if you're not ill, then please do everything you can to uh, remain healthy and happy. God bless you all. Happy Easter. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you, Deacon Kevin. And, and goodbye to everyone. That's it. Are you looking at the recording? <laughs>